Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Online Darts, the live lounge this Monday, the 7th of December. It's finally here. It is the World Championship Special. I'm Phil Bars, and of course, joined by always, Jonathan and Jack Gobby Garwood. Gentlemen, good evening. How are we? I'll wait for you then, Gob. Hello, hello. You get to go? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just wait for you there, pal. Let's, let's not, let's not go for everyone, you... shall we? Uh, yeah. I'm about to say. Hey. <laughs> well, normally you go first. I don't know. Hello. I'm being... <laughs> yeah, uh, welcome. Uh, new surroundings I'm, I'm... For, for tonight's show. I'm about to uh, say. You know, and... You've got, you've got the... You've got the you've got the big news exactly. You've got the new surroundings, and you've got the brand new online darts gear that's being used. Yeah, can't can't complain. To be fair, although if you work for anything new, because shot horror, I'm still having like a running thing for this show. But uh, we soldier on with, thankfully. 30 days of unlimited data from Vodafone for their Christmas special. So magic from them. Um, yeah. <laughs> Could be interesting. If Vodafone wants to sponsor us, if Vodafone wants to sponsor us, by the way, they're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, there, there is that, I way. suppose. Yeah, so so by the way, I've got to say, everybody, this is a this is a uh, a, a Christmas uh, a, a Christmas thing that also lights up everybody i've decided not to go for the light up bit tonight just to try to deal with the uh, barzi streaming capabilities but look it lights up <laughs> everybody it's christmas here it's like it's like barzi's christmas lights behind yes there you go. absolutely there you go absolutely so no uh, everybody very well welcome obviously to the show we're just putting the links out obviously across socials we'd be great if you ever get if you could join us um the reason why i'm wearing this is because i haven't actually got the shirt that phil sent to gob i haven't got mine yet no doubt it'll probably turn up tomorrow but after the world championship draw i am so excited now for this tournament eight days to go it's like advent it's like the countdown to christmas i can't wait Barzi. i can't wait Love it. The fact that it is here, it's finally here. But like we say, we'll get on to the world in a minute. We're just sharing the links across social media, everyone. So we'd be grateful if you can too, whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, or on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're just making sure the room fills up. And we hope you are all good as well. Everyone in the chat room, we really do appreciate that you join us every single week. It's much appreciated, guys, because without you, we don't do it. Is the thing if no one watches absolutely, us, guys. then we're we're absolutely irrelevant. But looking forward to today's show. <laughs> of course, it is all about the world championships and just an absolute buzz around it. Gob, looking forward to the worlds. You're not a darts fan unless you're looking forward to the worlds, are you? Let's be fair. It's the big one. It's the Christmas special. It, it gets all the casuals involved as well. I think because of the time here and the atmosphere that we've created, Ali Pali, um, fantastic that there's good fans back in in some guys. Um, obviously, there's certain rules and restrictions around that, but the building is just another win for the PDC. They've been absolutely superb this year. We, we've said it a lot. We've praised them a lot. And to be, we'll, we'll call them up when they make it wrong, but they've been absolutely bang on with everything they've done through lockdown, in my opinion. They, they've handled this year superbly. Yeah, 100%. And I saw some people moaning on social media, the fact that you had to buy a table of four and whatever. It's like, look, guys, it's not going to go back to normal straight away. There are restrictions around how this had to be done there was always going to be compromises and sacrifices to get the fans back in. And look, it's a small sacrifice for a year, but just to get a thousand people back at Alexandra Palace is unbelievable. And Matt, Barry and everyone have done an amazing job. So people that are massively criticising them, for me, just need to get in the real world a little bit. Look, we, we, look, we, we've been ardent supporters of the PDC for what they've done throughout lockdown. There's no doubt about that. And like Gob says, we will call it out if they mess it up. There have been occasions where we thought, have they really done this the right way? But you can't fault 
what Matt and Barry have done. There is no doubt that they have been at the forefront of trying to get fans back. Obviously, as well, in terms of matchroom stuff, Eddie's probably happy, the happiest cat on the planet right now because I've obviously got AJ against Pulev on Saturday with fans at Wembley. Oh, sorry, at the O2, excuse me. Uh, so that's a big one. Um, and yeah, we get the Worlds back on Tuesday week. As you say, eight days to go. This time, to, this time next week, we'll be doing a sort of live lounge special no idea on what the special is going to be, uh, but we will do a sort of live lounge special on the eve. It's like Dartmouth Eve, I think is probably the right word of putting this. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to hand it over to our amazing listeners and we're just going to let them choose the destiny of the show. We'll start the stream and they can fire away. Of course, we well, are going to throw in some stats and premium. Yeah, exactly that. We're obviously, we're, we're going to throw in some stats from our partner at Premium Darts Data, who is working on some great world stats for us. But apart from that, next week, you guys will be in control. Right, before we crack in, let's just say hello to a few people in the chat room. As always, you are all here. Absolutely amazing. Um, we've got our resident Aussie. Hello, how are you all doing? All the normal suspects are here, which is great. Look, we can't wait. And you guys are amazing. Remember, in the comments in the chat room, get them in, anything about the world. And, of course, at the end, we will have the general free-for-all. Gentlemen, have asked whatever the hell you like about darts. Massively going to regret that now, aren't I? Yeah, absolutely right. Definitely, you're going you're gonna, to... You're, some of the questions are going to be ridiculous now, but you've just thrown that open there, Barzi. Nobody else. Yeah. Um, Alistair, your picks for a surprise one. We'll come on to that when we talk about the draw as it opens up and everything like that. But, gents, we're going to dive straight into the World Championships. First of all, before we look at the draw and the draw bracket and, and everything like that, we're going to put you on the spot. Seeds in danger. Oh, God. Going straight in at the deep end. No messing around here today, boys. We're going in and we're going in hard. Let's have a nice look at the draw. Let's and and Gob's dial up internet is back. AOL. Got that. The four the four the four G's working well, Gob, tonight from Vodafone. <laughs> Well, the thing is, it is that thing of beauty on offer in front of us. The Sid Waddell Trophy is the prize for one lucky person. But as I've just said, not for not for all. So, Mr. Jalafi, and we'll come How to you first while Gob sorts out his internet. Yeah. How many do you Who's want? Who's in danger for your seat? I'd about to say, how many do you want? Because there's about 16 that I could make a case for. That I could say a really just your, How many ju do you want? Ju ju just your two. I want two seeds that you genuinely think are in the most danger right now. And the same for the chat room, guys. Like Get them in the chat. Oh, they're coming good and fast. I like this, everyone. You yes. are all on absolute like fire that. today. They are coming thick right. and fast. So we love that. So I'm going to go with the name. Right. First one I think is in danger is Chris Doby on day two. We could see our first seed lose in the afternoon session on day two. Jess Smith, King Barry playing Brilliant. unbelievable stuff. If you've never seen Key playing before, watch him when he goes on opening night. I'm so happy that the PDC have scheduled that for opening night, by the way. Jess Smith, who's playing some unreal stuff against King Barry, please, more of that. So I think Chris could definitely be in a little bit of danger. And... I'm going to save one just in case Gob goes for him. So I'll uh, so I'll save one. And I hate to say this, but after the way that he played, in particular one person played at the Players' Championship Finals, if it is Luke Humphreys that comes through against Paul Lim, Dimitri van den Berg, the number nine seed, a world match play champion, is in huge danger. Luke on that stage comes alive. Now, now this is me talking, everybody. Who some people that may not have watched this all the time or listen to the show all the time. I'm a massive Dimitri Vandenberg fan. I love him to bits, but I think he could be in a bit of danger because both of these players are in are, are come alive on that stage. Dimitri's made the quarterfinals two out of the last three years. He hasn't got to defend much money this time round, obviously. 
But I'm looking forward to that one. If it is that game, if it is that game to kick us off, I think it's it's uh, I think it's I think it's the Tuesday night. It is Tuesday night potentially, the 22nd of December. Dimitri Vandenberg against Luke Humphreys or Paul Lim. Even Paul Lim, we we, we no disrespect to him, he's a legend. But I'm just going on the basis of who I've seen at the moment. If it is Dimitri against Luke, uh, Dimitri's in big danger. Huge. Job for you. If he can, if he can hear Difficult us. Difficult to argue with that. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Don't worry about me. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Go on. <laughs> That's a mess. You're laughing. Around. Perfect. Uh, I completely agree with the Chris Derby pick. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to pick players that are in danger no matter who comes through the first round. So there are a couple out there that, that set up tasty ties, but I'm looking at players who are in danger no matter who comes through. And Chris Derby is definitely one of those. Jeff Smith and Keane Barry too. Very capable darters. Um, I'm going to chuck Nathan Aspinall's name into the list. Um, Scott Waits is former world champion. Matt Campbell looked superb um, at the World Cup of Darts. Both of them, if they get a game to, to get ready and get going, um, they could def- certainly give Nathan a run for his money. I don't think he's carrying the form this year that we, we've seen from him previously. Um <sighs> Uh, Jars just just said his boy's in trouble. I think one of mine might be too. He doesn't play too great on TV recently. And Christopher Tosi picked up Ryan Joyce or Carol Sedlicek. And his finishing has been superb of late. It, it's done him wonders on TV. Carol Sedlicek got the better of Christopher Ship. He's, he's a player that just keeps on getting better and better. And with a game to warm up again, how, how this round works. I think Christoph could be in a little bit of trouble there. Interesting. Right. I'm surprised you went with the ones... I thought you might go with Nathan Aspinall. I thought you might go with Nathan Aspinall. Surprised you went with Christoph. I, I think I, Aspinall's I in a little bit of trouble, high. but I think Christoph is in probably a little bit more. And the other one as well, I, I don't think he's in massive amounts of trouble because he's superb. But Jose D'Souza has got his work cut out for him to ease his way into this tournament because Ross Smith or David Evans are more than capable of putting up a run mm. against him. And they will be battle hard and coming through that first match against each other. They are two superb form dart players at the minute. Good, good pick. I like agree. That. I agree. Right. Mine. Adrian Lewis. Because I think he will play Damon Hetter. I think if it is Heta, I think he's in a whole lot of trouble for for me. He, he's one that I do worry about. I don't think we'll see Danny Baggish as good as we saw last year, mainly because of the lack of competitive darts in North America. That That's a slight concern for, for Danny Baggish for me. And I think Heta comes through that and then he plays Adrian Lewis. And the other one, Gabriel Clemens. Because I think he will play his countryman, Nico Kurtz. Really? Tell me I'm wrong, gentlemen. Really? T- tell me I'm wrong. Look, Nico mm. Kurtz is a fat with a player. Fair, like we even saw if he plays Andy year. Hamilton, he's another one who has lots of experience up on that stage. 100%. And if Andy and Kurtz threw a, a scrap with Nico Kurtz, he'd be fired up for it. We, we've seen Clemens turn up for three, four legs, and then disappear for the next five or six. The World Cup's a prime example of that. Andy Hamilton played more set play than Clemens has. Put money on it. Well, look at the look at the slam. Clemens was horrendous in his last game. And it goes back for me, I'm not sold on TV, which is why I think he's in a whole world of trouble. I, they I, are for me. Kurt, if, I'll give you... I'll give you I'll, I'll give you Nico Kurtz if he plays Nico Kurtz. He plays the hammer. I'll just give Clements the edge there. But he plays Kurtz. That'd be an intriguing one. There, there we can finally see Gob. We can see who is better. Who is going to be the future star of German darts? <laughs> is it going to be Gabe or is it going to be Nico? Yeah, I agreed. Before we move on, we've done the seeds bit. Let's go through some in the chat room because you guys have been absolutely on it tonight. The chat room is on fire. Wow. A lot agreeing. Um, Rob Cross, yeah, look, I think Rob is in danger as well. I don't 
I, I don't I, deny I, that. I'm I think Rob's got a t- pick. I'm going to say that one. I'm surprised at that pick. I'll be honest, because look, we all know my love of the Obergenius, okay? But Rob, like, and I've been one of Rob Cross's probably biggest critics over the last year on this show and on our previous shows. I think Rob's probably played the best I've seen him play since arguably what the 2019 match play, maybe even the Euros. Yeah, I don't know. I but... agree. Until he played, so I think... until he played Joe Cullen, it was like one step forward, two back because the Cullen performance was horrendous. Yeah, but in a short format like that, then you you have you don't really have the opportunity. Whereas in a longer format, short so format, it was best of ten. I thought it was best of six. I thought it was first of eleven. I thought it was first of ten. I thought it was when the format went up. No, Cullen I, thought, I thought it was six five because Cullen played. Yeah, Cullen played white again uh, in the third round when it went to ten. Because I won money on that one. Yeah, but still, when the fun stopped. Yeah, but but, but 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 still, <laughs> even even best of eleven. 3-0, 3-0, 3-0 in sets. That's that's job done. Nine legs. Yeah, it's nine legs. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay. So but what I'm saying is, uh, all I'm saying is, is that Rob Cross has the opportunity there in the set play because remember, it's not like where you're getting close to the winning line. If you then maybe get to two one or two all, your opponents they've got to win three. Your opponents got to win three legs to go and win the game. That's that's just a fact. So my point is, is that I don't think Cross is in as much danger as he would have been potentially a month to two months ago. Arguably, no, I don't, I don't disagree. He's not in his, as much trouble, but I still think there's a question mark there. Dave Chisnell, Reese has said Chizzy. <laughs> Look, I don't disagree the way he's played of, of late. He's played better in the slam run into, I mean, the players are running to one, but his form in, in the slam was awful. And yeah, but... Mikel or Brown? Look, look, again, this is the thing for me. Chizzy missed five match starts to beat the Gerwin Price in the last set play tournament. Appreciate it's a double in format, so that's a leveller, but he missed five match starts. I pre- Again, look, I'm not suggesting he's going to go and win the thing, but it, in, in set play, he does all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't buy into that too much because I think form's form. It doesn't matter that you've still got to hit five on one and finish. So I, I don't buy into personally the set play format too much. Obviously, Gob, you've played. A bit more. I don't know how you feel on it, but I, if you if your general form's good, it doesn't matter for me what you're playing over. I think the only difference is fifth fifth legs, deciding legs in a set. If someone like James Wade is going to come through those more often than someone like Dave Chisnell. Because James Wade under pressure and in deciding legs has, has got a superb record and Dave Chisnell's action seems to fall apart under pressure. If Chizzy can get ahead and get the breaks early in, in the set, it will set off fine. But the more deciding legs Dave Chisnell goes to, in my opinion, the less likely he is to come through a set play event. Even yeah, after his fair, run. Fair one. The Grand Prix. Yeah, and last one we'll take from the chat room. People saying Gurney. Look, Gurney's all-round form isn't good. However, it's not the toughest of last 64 games. I think there are a lot worse draws Daryl Gurney could have got to try and rebuild some confidence. There are, but it's not the nicest. Willie O'Connor has he's fluctuated a little bit since the World Cup last year. Not been the top-level performer that we expected him to be when he hit that, that purple patch and kick on a bit. Neil Zonneveld come through the qualifier, but... Let's be fair, he, he probably would have made it anyway if it hadn't have been for COVID restrictions. And he knocked James Wade out at the Players' Championships. Either of those two could, yeah. could give Daryl a run for the minute, especially <laughs> if Daryl starts but, getting down on himself and lacks that little bit of motivation we've seen from him at times recently. I, I agree they could, but for me, there are worse games that he could have got, is all I'm saying for that. Yeah. A hundred percent, there could have been worse games. So we've we, we've eased you in with the seeds in danger. Now we're going to have a look at the Fab Three, the big three in the betting, and which one would you rather be right now? First of all, with the world number one, Michael Van Gerwen. How are we assessing his mindset and form heading to Alexandra Palace? Right, look, we take we take the mic here about. You know, you you know MVG pretty well. I, I'm not being funny, and this is the first time I'll ever say 
ever say something serious, you're probably the most in the know out of us all on this show where you feel his game's at. Now, are we suggesting that he, he's going to be back to the 2016 form of Michael Van Gogh? Absolutely not. But would you suggest that this is the best he's played in probably, what, 12 months, probably since the UK Open, maybe? Certainly, for me, it was the best he played since the UK Open. And the, the big thing for me is the, the finishing. And there were question marks about could he win a game under pressure? And the Merv King final ticked the boxes for me because he's taken to a last leg decider like against Whitlock but he produced the goods so no I think if he doesn't win the players championship he's in a completely different mindset but I think him winning that makes everyone else think again yeah uh, there were still moments throughout that tournament and in that final where he missed handfuls of doubles and batches of doubles that we're not used to seeing. I just don't think they were as punished as much. And that could be the worst thing for the rest of the field is that somebody didn't take that opportunity to, to land one on Michael at the Players' Championships. Um, I just think with the area of the draw that he been placed into, you got seeded players within that part of the draw, I think are afraid of him. He's he's beaten them often enough. His record against them is often enough. We've seen that section of the draw get leads on Michael, start chasing game with Michael, and it just means too much to them. Johnny Clayton, Dave Chisnell, Joe Cullen, Ricky Evans, we, we've all seen them struggle against Michael because it's Michael. And that's the problem. Before the Players' Championship run, perhaps we don't see that as evident, but that win gives him that little bit of the fear factor back again. And it's not over the entire field. I still think there are large parts of the field that won't fear him. But that particular section of the draw that he finds himself in are a handful of players that I think are scared of him when he's not on form. I just think it means too much to them to correct the record they've got against him. They, they try too hard or they don't try enough. They know that they need to take that one chance because they've been in that position before and they put too much on it. My biggest problem with this, with, with that side of the draw, is this, okay, about MVG. You look at that section of the draw. We looked at this last year. It's the same co uh, co uh, comments that we had last year. Okay, Ryan Murray or Lawrence Alaga. Now, we all know I love Lawrence Alaga because he's been he's just one of the best actions in darts. Ryan Murray, look, he's been playing some great stuff, but over a best of five sets going against MVG, I'm not so sure. You look at the rest of that section of the draw before he gets to the semi-final automatic, you know, before he gets to the potential semi-final. Is there anybody there who we would look at it and go, do you know what? He's got Michael's number. Do you know what? He's got a chance of beating Michael. We said it again last year. There was nobody there. And again, I think that this is the case. I can't see anybody in that section of the draw, certainly from the CD players, and looking at the the players that are in uh, as non-seeds, I can't see anybody there that will give Michael a decent test before he gets to a potential semi-final. This is my, generally my honest opinion. Interesting. From the world number one, we go to the defending champion. Now, this is an interesting one. In the future world because... Before. But well, he is actually the mute looking at Darts Rankings right now. If I'd say the future at this moment in time, dartsrankings.com has him as the official, as the world number one. It's a fact. Incorrect. Because the money hasn't come off yet, so they're wrong. I, I'm just looking at facts here, Barzi. I just look at facts. That's all I do. Oh, then, if, then, then if you'd like to look at facts, I'll refer you to the main pdc.tv or pdpa.co.uk that do supply the official tables. But Peter Wright, how much searching has the champ got to do? Because wasn't convincing at the players and are there things living in his head rent free at the moment? Allah a big green machine. Gob, this is your boy, so I'll let you go. Uh, I think Pete will be the first to blink pre-tournament. I think he likes to play or try and play a mind game 
Taylor-esque or, or et cetera from the past. And I'm not sure he's got that stature in the game yet. Or that consistency. Right, I, I know he tinkers of his darts a lot more, but the way that he's bowed out of a couple of tournaments this year as world champion, in their pomp, Taylor, Van Gerwen, Barney, they don't allow it. They don't allow that to happen. They put up a fight. You have to take it from them in every single tournament, whereas Snakey just looks a little bit dejected. He just looks like he's ready to roll over a couple of times. And for me, if you're the reigning world champion, I know it's a longer tour now. I know it's more difficult. There's a lot of concentration, but you shouldn't be giving up wins that easily if you're world. If you want to be the world number one and you want to be the world champion again. Look, here's one for you, God. Here's my. Whilst you're talking about your boy, is he in huge danger because Steve West potentially? will have already played on that stage before he plays, right? Is that a help or a hindrance? It depends on the performance Steve West put us in. Steve West is a more than capable player. We saw that at the European Championships, the form that he carried there. His power scoring could really put right on the back foot to start with. But then again, Noel Malik then put him on the back foot last year and he went on to be world champion. So a good test early on might help him to settle on a set of darts for the event. Who knows? It's snake bite. And with the gaps in between the two round, the two round, and the same again, it wouldn't surprise me if we see at least three, maybe four changes. I'm just not sure he can get away with that this year. For me, he needs to pick a set of darts for the tournament. Don't take any more with you. Get your head down and play them for the entire 17 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we only take him. one set to Ali yeah. Pally with him. <laughs> we he's never going to listen to it, is he? But for me, he needs to take their World Championship darts. Something popped up on Twitter the other day, and it was the text to Lee at Red Dragon, where he said, you've made me a very, very future world champion. Pick them darts up again, get back in that mentality, and convince yourself with them darts, you're not going to lose. Because... It's almost like he's he's looking for a ready-made excuse now if he doesn't go and defend it. I, look, I, I, I'm going to say spoiler alert. I don't think he gets out of his quarter, to be honest with you. But spoiler alert. I'll tell you who, who beats him in a oh. bit. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, Lee has asked, who's the biggest threat to right in his quarter? We will come on to that, mate, when we do our predictions of who gets where. So don't worry. We haven't forgot about that one. And then from there, Definitely. the world champion, the last the last of the big three as they've been billed, is the Iceman, Gathering Price. Look, I, for once, I don't know where we are on Gezi. Two months ago, yeah, look. I'd have said I'd have said look, he's in a right good position here. But something tells me the, the two weeks at home may have done him the world of good. Definitely. Look, we, we, we talked about the World Grand Prix and he's he is the, the winner of the last set play event. Like, let's not... It's, it's, again, I only did in facts. And it is a fact that he is the last... He is the winner of the last set play event. And he know it's a format that he's hated and hated and hated the whole way through. And now he, he's, he's won a set play event. That will get him over the... That will do him the world of good. He's also won the World Cup. He's won, uh, like I say, the World Grand Prix. Look, do I th do I think that he was? I think he was certainly flagging by the time the Slam came round, and by the time that the Players' Championship Finals came round. I didn't think that he was anywhere near his best. Although he's made the semi final of the, of the Players' Championships, the biggest problem for me was that he, he missed the opportunity to punish MVG again. Yeah, I think the record is it now one in twenty two on television. Something like that, TV? Something like that. It's, it's not great. It, it, it's, it's not no, great, whatever so, it is. So, so my point is, is this. The only time he's beaten him in a, in a big event is the Grand Slam semi-final on TV, right? 
what that that format is a long format, and obviously MVG and Price could potentially meet the final. Now again, we'll talk about predictions and all that. But like you say, that time at home is going to do him the world of good. There's no doubt about that. He's getting back with his uh, with his family. He's been away for so long. He was flagging. They all were, to be fair, all living in the bubble life. No one wanted to be there pretty much by the end of the by the time uh, the, the final of the Players' Championship came around. They were the quickest people on the way home. Then you could say Jack Robinson. But like you say, it's a huge moment that Gezi's back here. And I think he's he's allowed to reset his mind this because, look, we all know this is the one that everybody wants. But if Gezi could win this one and take the world number one spot as well, what a year and what a couple of years it's been for the Iceman. Cobb, where are you on Gezi? I think he's got his schedule wrong. I don't see this break working for him. And I almost think that this week or this two weeks is normally the time that we'd see the players go off and play in local opens or competitions just to keep their arm in. I think he he, he started lagging and he lost interest a little bit at the wrong time for me. And because of the lack of match practice he's going to be able to get over these two weeks, the Players' Championships had to be his tune-up event. Not is I can't be asked to want to go home event, and I, I I know it's difficult to say that, and the players have we've never been in a situation before to try and balance your schedules like that. But for him to have that mentality at that event, I, I don't think will work for him. The lack of match practice, fortunately, I think for him he comes through the first two games pretty easily, so we can use them to to get himself going. But after that. It, it could be tight. That um, fourth round game, whoever it is from, from those six names, will give him a run for his money. No, I, I agree. So we've touched on the Fab Three, as we're going to call them, because they have been far better than everyone else consistently. If you had to be one of them right now, both of you, which one would you like to be heading into the World Championships? Ooh. Easy. Um, Easy. Van Gerwen. That's a very good question. Go, go on. Van Gerwen. Van Gerwen. You've just won a tournament. You're on the up. I think the other two are trying to find the start of that up. Snakey, obviously, changing his dart. Price deciding that he wasn't in the right frame of mind, was missing home and that sort of thing. So... Van Gerwen is, is on his way up. He's in a nice part of the draw, as we've said already, that suits him. It might not necessarily be a nice part of the draw ability-wise, but in terms of matchups, they suit him. And he's confident. And I just think that he won't have to exert too much energy. You've got the breaks in between. The only thing that might affect him is the travelling to and from over Christmas and if he goes home or not. But he's been there enough times now to, to know how to do that, to know how to manage that. And this time of the year, and you take your break a couple of weeks later. Right now, of the three, I want to be Michael Van Gerwen. Joe, sure. can't disagree. Yeah, I can't disagree. I, I, the, I, if I, if I, if I was going to ranking order, I'd be Peter Wright third. I'd be Gerwin Price second, and then it would be the it would be the Green Machine. Look again, as I said before, there isn't anybody in that part of the draw, in my opinion, that scares MVG. And to get to a semi final, look. The longer he goes into a tournament, I think I can't remember who it was uh, in the chat room. I'm just looking at it now. Uh, who said uh, th- the longer he goes into a tournament, the the more likely he wins an event. And look, he gets a lovely, lovely couple of rounds to get a lovely couple of uh, draws to get him into a potential quarterfinal where it's the best of nine sets. Look, I, I can't remember who it was. So I apologise uh, who who I'm stealing, whose line I'm stealing at this point in the chat room. But I think it will be. It would be the green. It would definitely be the uh, definitely be the green machine, and I think. Well, once again, I, it, it's a shame because the only the only downside I see to that Phil is the fact that we saw what happened last year. He was playing his C game throughout the entirety of the World Championships, and it nearly cost. Well, it did cost him in the final. He had chances to win. You know, he had chances to win all those uh, five of the eight sets, and he didn't take them. Here's one for you, some info as well. Unlike in previous years, he will only be going home once. 
So he's only going home between Christmas and New Year, I presume. Then once he's uh, once that game's the second round's been happened, he's only going home for Christmas. So he'll go home after he wins his first round game, and then once he comes back after Christmas, that is it. He's here. That's a bold shout. When that's a bold shout. When <laughs> no, it's not. It's when. <laughs> Um, wow. But then, once, sorry, Lawrence. Sorry, Ryan. But then that, that, that's done for you, there, pal. <laughs> but then, once back after Christmas, then no going home until he's either lifting the Sid Waddell trophy or is eliminated. Does that change your mind? By the way, uh, let us know in the chat. No, let doesn't. us know in the chat room as well. It doesn't just. Just a quick one. Just want to say thank you very much, Joe. It was you. It was Joe BT who said that was me that said that. Thank you, Joe. I apologise. I couldn't scroll back through far enough to find your comment. Right, gentlemen, you know what's coming now, don't you? You know what slide I'm going to put up. Get ready in the chat room as well. Draw bracket oh, time. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. Deary yes. me. Right. Draw Deary bracket me. time. Right. Play along. In the chat room, to start with, I want to know who your final four will be. Same as you guys in the chat room. Who will be the four semi-finalists before we move on to bigger things? Obviously, we'll all start in section one with... Do you you want me to go first? Do you want me to go first? I don't mind. I, I normally if do, you'd I don't like want to, to go first at this point. If 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 you'd like to. Right. Michael Van Gerwen gets knocked out in the second round. No, he doesn't. I, I can't say that. I, I can't say that seriously. Uh, right. <laughs> so the quarterfinal will be in section one. Will be. Oh, by the way, are, are we going? Um, are we going? Do we want to say our final four all in order, or do we want to go one, two, three, four each? No. 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 We'll do. Okay. We'll, we'll do yours. Do do yours first. Okay. So Michael Van Gerwen uh, makes the quarterfinal where he plays a certain Belgian. Sod it. Dimitri van der Berg does beat Luke Humphries, and I put him as my one to uh, as my one to uh, watch. But it's Michael Van Gerwen against Dimitri von van der Berg, where Michael Van Gerwen wins by five sets to three. The second quarter. So, yep. This is MB. so tight. This is so tight. I don't know where I'm going with this pick. I really don't know. I'm going to say that Michael Smith makes the quarterfinals and he loses to Glenn Durrant. I think Duz has had a chance to regroup. Ooh. I think he's going to look in, in decent form. The problem, the pro- the only problem I can see for Duz really is against Damon Hetto in the third round, potentially. That's the biggest problem that Duz has got on that Rick's the quarterfinal. But I think Duz beats Smith by five sets to four. So I'm going MVG against Glenn Durrant in the semi final of the World Championships. Yes, please. Uh, third section of the draw Peter Wright is knocked out in the fourth round. By a wizard. He's a wizard, guys. Simon Whitlock is playing the darts of his life right now, again. And Simon Whitlock makes the third, makes the uh, makes the quarterfinals, where he plays. I hate to say this because I don't want to give Gob any credit, but he plays James Wade. Wade is on a resurgence yet again. It's going to be Wadey who makes the quarterfinals, but and sorry, and Wade wins. Wade beats Whitlock by five sets to three. So I'm going to go with so I've got MVG versus Duzza and then Wadey. I'm going to say, obviously, this is the part of the this is the part of me where I think this is where the non seed might come through in this section of the draw. And I'm going to say that that non-seed will be. Am I? 
yeah, do you know what? Sod it. I'm going to say it. The silencer makes a World Championship quarterfinal. Jeff Smith. I think he. I think he's playing some really good stuff. I'm really looking forward to it. I, I look. I would love King Barry to come through because I think he's amazing. But I like Jeff Smith. I think he's playing some really good stuff, and I think he comes through that one. And he plays Gerwin Price in the quarterfinals, but that's where his run ends. I think it will be. Oh my God, Jose de Sousa against Mervyn King in the third round. What a game that could potentially be. Um, but Gerwin Price will come through that. He'll battle through, and he'll play Jeff Smith, and it will be five sets to two. So my World Championship semi-finals, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Van Gerwen against Glenn Duran, and I've got James Wade against Gerwin Price. Gob, are you agreeing or are you going in a completely different direction? I want to say there's a mixture. I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by a couple of, of the calls there from uh, my, my colleague, but uh, section one, uh, completely agree with the Michael Van Gerwen pick. Like I said before, I just. I, don't see where the resistance comes from from that top half of section one. Um, I, I do agree that Dimmy is, is probably slight, well, he's not slight favourite, he is favourite in my to come through that second half, but I don't think it will be him. I think it will be with Martin Clearmacker. I think he's superb. Nice shout. Um, I, I think he edges Danny Nopper out, um, and, and then he, he goes berserk and he's his way in from there. I, I think he's he's solid. His, his combination finishing is, is superb. Um, so I'm going Van Gerwen beats Clearmacker in section one. Yeah. Yeah. Section two is that. an absolute nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, <laughs> this is struggling, man. I'm, I'm worried about Kevin Brist. I'm worried about Gary Anderson's knee. And I'm worried about Mensor Sulovic's form. Obviously, he, he's been away from darts for a few weeks. So we really don't know how any of those three are going to turn up. So the safe bet is, is to go with Michael Smith, where he could play any one of three in my eyes. He either sees Van Dyven, Bodo, Doran, or Hetta. Um in, in section yeah. two, I just, I just think that draw deflates Lewis. You, you just can't buy one. Um, I like Cross at the minute, but I, I just don't see him taking out Dirk the way Dirk's playing. Um, so I'm going to say Michael Smith beats the Ober Genius. Dirk Van Dyven, but he rounds off a, a solid year with a quarter final. Um, I, I think his scoring power, I've said this a lot about Hetter, I really rate him, but his game is just one solid level. And I think Dirk's got the gears where he can go up and down a level when he needs to and, and find that extra bit of scoring he needs to take up. Um, just using the edge, but I think when it comes down to it, Michael Smith will beat him and see himself into the semi finals. Uh, so that's section two done. Section three. Um, <laughs> Go on. Admit I'd, I'd it. The boy's going out. Admit it. Admit it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good <laughs> part of it, isn't it? I, I mean, do it. Anywhere else, I'd love to see Ratajski come through. <laughs> I've, I've, I can't. I can't. I've said it for too long. Uh, snake bite beats James Wade. Chick it out on that one. He chick it out on that Bottled one. Bottled it. Absolute He's bottle bottle back, job. He does not. He does not have the courage. <laughs> of no, no, he does not. all there. He, I was about to say, he doesn't believe the words that have just come out of his mouth. He's saving face there. Chance. Absolutely right. No, I, I don't believe you with it. I really rate James Wade, and it would make me the happiest guy on the planet for James Wade to, to lift the world title. I think he fully deserves it, and he's, he's the greatest left-hander to ever play the game. Uh, been fantastic for the sport of darts, and would love it, but he just doesn't fare that well at this event. And there's always going to be that one game in a minute where you don't quite fancy, where, where he can't find that, that next level that he needs. And that's where Snakey takes it away from him. 
Um, Wright beats Wade. Section four. Section four. Where do we start with this? The Dutch destroyer of buildings, <laughs> Vincent van der Voort, no way through the bottom, the bottom half of this. Uh, I fancy oh Aspinall my. to be tested too much, but, or not too much, but a solid test by Scott Waits or Matt Campbell. Um, I, I just think Aspinall or the winner of that game is the tough game for Vincent there. Boris and, and Ron will be a, a solid game and, and we've seen how fantastic Boris can be, but I just think the experience Van der Voort's got up there, if he gets on a little bit of a run, he's very hard to stop. And I just think that he's got the edge there. The bottom six players, they're all quality on their day. Jeff Smith, Keen Barry, Dobes is struggling for form a bit. Um Gurney is is sinking and quite quickly. Um, just just don't fancy him for a run here. Willie O'Connor will be steady and, and Zonovo steady, but I, I'm thinking the big bulldozing machine Van der Voort comes through that part, finds himself in the quarterfinal. Where he will play the special one. Ooh. Ooh interesting. interesting. I think price four. Very. I think Price fall. I think Price comes through Woodhouse or Lewis pretty comfortably. Um, I think Dolan will be steady, but he will miss those vital opportunities. I don't think he's got the scoring to match Gezi, and he'll just take it away in those crucial fourth or fifth legs of the set. But when it comes to playing Jose de Souza, he will have already come through Ross Smith or David Evans, which I think will be a very, very tough encounter. Then will have come through Mervyn King or, or in likeliness, Max Hop. Another very, very tough encounter. I think he'll be raring to go by that point. He'll have the week off because after the gap when he then comes and or a few days off because that's after the first gap, I think, when Jose and Gerwin yeah. face off. And I think Jose the Chooser will, will catch Gezi, the Iceman, cold. And Jose think, goes on yeah, to uh, make the same final. Just to say, by the way, just to put it quickly, Jose versus Gerwin Price would not be after the week off. Would that be after the few days off? That's a fourth round game. So it's back after a third round game against either Merv or Max Hop. Do you want to change your mind? Oh. Either way. No, I'm still going with Jose. So out of Jose, the special one, and the and the killer of buildings, who is your last semi-final pick, Mr. Garwood? Jose. He's had an unbelievable year and it, it just keeps getting better for him at this moment. Interesting. I'd love right. It. I'd love it, but I don't think it will be. We make it a clean sweep first up because I agree that MVG will come through section one. I just don't see who stops him there. Like, like us all, I just don't physically see who beats him in that top half. Another news, everybody. Another news, everybody. The water is wet. Another news, everybody. It's currently dark out. About to say dark outside of the UK. And Phil Bass picks uh, Michael Van Gerwen to get through a section of the draw. What a shock! Just like to say, I pointed out that he won the last tournament. I called it as well. Move, <laughs> I called moving it. on to section two. Moving on to section two. I think that. Michael Smith makes the quarterfinal, the form Bully Boy's in. In that quarterfinal, he will play Durant. I agree. However, Michael Smith beats Durant in the quarterfinal. So we have a mouth-watering first semi-final of the Bully Boy against the Green Machine. Rematch of the 2019 World Championship final, of course. Yes. So, that is my... Can I just say, can I, just, I, I, I just want to jump in here really, really quickly. I don't think we're giving Jason Lowe near, anywhere near enough credit, by the way, I should stress. 
He's playing some brilliant, brilliant stuff. I, I know I called Michael Smith to make the quarterfinal, but I don't think it's going to be easy for him. I think Jason Lowe will take him at least to a fifth set. I think he's playing some brilliant stuff. I really genuinely think. Possible. No, no, he is. But then on the Euro Tour, and of late, he misses big darts through lack of TV experience. And I don't think that's where Bully Boy gets him. Phil Bars. Yeah. Don't talk to me about Mr. Um, Darts, Phil Bars. I think we're all getting a little bit MVG at the UK on. Open. That, that one match of low, the MVG. Yeah. Look, no, he's, he's missed. He's played he's missed low on, on the he's floor, I agree. But on TV, on TV, misses too many big darts for me. He's only played so, in two, two so, tournaments on telly. I mean, my class of Euro Tour is telly. It's a big stage and it's string. Yeah, he's so late. So, so, section three. I'm going rogue and I'm letting my heart rule my head here. Oh, dear. Or am I? <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Don't do no, it. In that section. Because I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with this. I think anyway. If if I if I have my head, if if I know roughly where you're going with this, I think if you go rogue, I know the two players you're picking. If you call Nico, you're a muggle. I'd say with Callum Ritz. No, I'm not. Well. Call... Ritz is the one. Look at him last year. Look at him in the players. Oh. He's the he one the that carries round. form from. Yeah, but it's the way he played. He the third round. Wait, can we just check? He's not watching it before we... uh... (laughs) Uh, I'm about to say... Yeah, yeah, he wants to me to give me the heads up. Um, (laughs) Man, look. I I, 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 I think section three is horrid. I'm not going to lie. But, no, right. One quarter finalist. He redeems himself from a poor run. Christoph Ratajski. Makes the quarterfinal. Christoph Ratajski makes. Picking Ratajski. You're picking Ratajski yes. to make a quarterfinal on TV. Yeah, I just think that the That's poor the run of form he's had, he redeems himself. The planets are alive. He will though, play yeah. in the. Qu- he will play in that quarterfinal. Don't do it. Ian, Ian Diamond White. Oh, Barzy. Really? Yes. Really? We know yes. Twenty's a bit oh. messed up, mate, but come on. Look, Ian really? White, Plus, I just... Holly is. He's a great bloke, but... Plus, I just can't bring myself to call the number seven seed there. I hope he loses. Look, you've got to, unfortunately, Barzi, I, I don't want him to win, but unfortunately, you've just got to admit the fact that he's made the last two TV finals and he's been playing, well, sorry, apart from the players' championships. And he looked But he was awful tough. in the players. So. Yeah, he was, but he didn't want to be, he didn't I'm, want to be there. No, none of them did. <laughs> and plus, and plus his world record. More chances than when there was for me going out to spell his first name. <laughs> <laughs> And I've got that now. Pretty in that protect. section, <laughs> yeah, I am going Christoph Ratajski to make the world semi-final. I mean, he's due a section TV, four. There's no doubt about that. Section four. The Iceman makes the quarterfinals, where he will play. Again, leap of faith in the system and his ability. He will play King Barry in the quarterfinal. Interesting pick. Very interesting pick. Look, I think whoever wins that... I'll say this now. No, do you know what? I'm saying this. I think whoever wins that first round tie between Jeff Smith and King Barry... 
will make the quarter final in that section. I just think Jeff Smith will beat it because of the experience. So I, I'm going. I'm, with, I'm, with I'm going. There. I'm going. Keen Barry to play Gerwin Price in the quarterfinals, where Gerwin Price wins. So my semi-final lineup is MVG against Michael Smith, Christoph Ratajski against Gerwin Price. You know what's coming next, gentlemen. Well, From you know what? before we go, before we go there, should we go through some of the comments in the chat? Because the chat room's buzzing with people picking theirs. I should stress this now. Like, look at the chat, chat room, guys. You guys have been immense. Absolute, some absolute brilliant and, and, stuff. I mean, Fraser Gunn's come up with a. Go on. Sorry, only go, go only on. Cherry Pepsi Max, folks. It's only Cherry Pepsi Max, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that right? So here's so here's one for me. Okay. Uh, Fraser Gunn's come out with a decent one saying that uh, Luke Humphreys to win the quarter to beat Michael Van Gerwen that would be one hell of a story if that was the case interesting Jack Nolte's gone uh, he'd love Lewis Anderson or Smith he thinks that Wade will beat Lewis correct answer well correct answer that Wade will beat A.D. Lewis uh, I don't think A.D. Get, personally gets through but um, it will be interesting I, I, I'd like to see Wadey uh, through there uh, Jacob's gone with MVG v Humphreys Gando v Dirk Van Dyvenboda Wright versus Wade and Price versus Jeff Smith as well. So I've so so there's a couple of interesting ones there. Just going to see if we can see a couple of more. Cliff one five seven two says MVG and Van der Berg, Peterson and, D- and Van Dyvenboda, Whitlock and Wade, and then D'Souza and Price. Unfortunately, D'Souza and Price I don't think they can meet in the quarterfinal. That's a decent fourth round tie, one hundred percent. Chris Doby, Kieran Archer shouting there uh, to have a good four. Christian Doss says on current four, Edgar could definitely make the last sixteen. I, look, there's some bold shouts that we put on this show, and then there's a bold shout that you just put there in the prediction in, in the chat room. That is probably the boldest of bold shouts ever. Uh, Josh Broadhurst saying Whitlock outsider, absolutely, totally agree on that as well. Hundred percent. Um, Ollie Hammond, hundred percent. Ollie uh, MVG, yeah, MVG versus Price, yeah, could potentially happen in the final, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Chris Dovey beats Price in the quarter final to be to play Wade in the semis. What a story that would be if Chris Dovey were to get there. So keep coming, guys. We will we will we will talk more after we give our rest of our things there. And Lendl says, uh, check at FDI index underscore index on Twitter if you want to know who's informed these days. Absolutely, by the way. If you want to know the up-to-date rankings there, oh Lendl's brilliant at what he does. I'm not we're not just saying this because he's watching the show. Check out at FDI underscore index. He's brilliant, everybody. If you if you don't follow him already. Right, gentlemen, and in the chat room from your final four that you've picked who on January the 3rd will lift the Sid Waddell trophy aloft at the palace on top of Muswell Hill. Zala, if you kicked us off, so you can go again. So MVG against Durant then in the semi-final. Do I go rogue? (laughs) The bogeyman. I am going to go potentially rogue here at this moment in time. It's going to be 6-4. Nah, I can't go rogue. I'm sorry, Glenn. Oh, I'm sorry. I know he watches the show. I'm sorry, Glenn. I just cannot see anybody stopping MVG in this form at the moment. So, Michael Van Gerwen, 6. Glenn Durrant, 4. So, Michael Van Gerwen reaches a third straight World Championship final. But he, but according to a top, according to a top star, he's got no chance of winning the world championship, despite winning the, uh, making the final the last three times and uh, making the semi final uh, the previous year in one of the greatest games that's ever been played at the Alexander Palace, if not the greatest. But you know, he's got no chance. Uh, third quarter versus the fourth quarter. Wade, Pri- Wade, I had James Wade against Gerwin Price. Unfortunately, Gob, I'm sorry, but James Wade's woes continue. At the Alexandra Palace, I'm going to go Gerwin Price six, James Wade three, meaning my final so, bars is it is MVG that final, against everybody. Gerwin Price. So where for is your right, money for the, the world? Big, the big the Dutchman world number one spot, no less. For the the, the Dutchman a, or or the Iceman, where? Are you going, Jarlath? I'm going 7-5. 
in an absolute epic world championship final. And you know what? We have a new name on the Sid Waddell trophy. I think that the two weeks has done him great. I think he's in unbelievable form. It is a long match. Don't get me wrong. I think that over a longer format, Michael Van Gerwen will be heavily favoured, and rightly so. But there are, it, 2020's been a weird year, everybody. And I think the year, it is the year of the Iceman. The Dragon will roar on January the 3rd. Gerwin Price will become the 2021 World Darts Champion. Gob, over to you from your final four. Oh. I'm off. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll only become, I'm just trying to count the names now, uh, you know, uh, he will only become the 10th player ever to lift the world championship of the PDC era. So, Gob, semi-final number one. I know you can't say Michael wins. You did that for the last three shows, you cheating butter. <laughs> <laughs> We've all said that. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this to the man, but he's he's gonna lose another heartbreaker, isn't he? <laughs> he? He just is. Like. Nothing would make us three happier than Michael Smith in a world final. Agreed. Especially we'll all the talk about the top well. three, all the other players that we've, we've got as favourites and, and all that sort of stuff. If Bully Boy's first one was the big one, seems like the change, that, the change that makes for darts as a whole, the change that makes for him would be absolutely massive. Because if he gets one, he'll go berserk. But you, Agreed. you just see him losing another heartbreaker, don't you? And until he doesn't, he's, he's going to get deep and, and not get over there. So I've, I've got to go MVGs in the final. Score? 6 5. Oh, that's, that's even hell. worse. <laughs> that, that is an absolute Ooh. heartbreaker. Oh, yeah. Heart. Oh. All right, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey? <laughs> well, I am, mate. No, Mariah Carey's version is much better of Heartbreaker. No, I'm sorry. Charm age, though, aren't they? Right there. Charm age, aren't they? That attire and then talking about Mariah Carey. <laughs> and your second game... Do I need to answer this? No, just just give me the score. I know you're going to say. Look, number one on the Players' Championship ranking order of merit wins a World Championship. Unless your name's Ian it White, then the rules. It doesn't there anymore. It does it, it, it doesn't. Then the rules. It, 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 well, it I'm sticking with it anyway. I'm using that logic because that's the only thing I've got to fall back on here because I'm really struggling to have got him this far. But he's going one further... Peter Wright beats Jose de Souza 6 4. So we have a repeat of the final from last year for you, Mr. Garwood. Is it a repeat or is it revenge in the final? Repeat. Scoreline. I made this call. I made this call months ago, and I ain't about to flip flop on it. I've, I've got to go with it, and if I get away with it, I get away with it. If not, he's probably changed darts, and I'm going to blame it on that. Uh, seven <laughs> four. I think if it goes and stays close, Van Gogh's got the edge. Right, needs to get out in front, put him under pressure, like he did last year, and and go from there. Um, and Gary in the chat room. Correct, your answer is right, based on <laughs> Mr. Garwood's predictions. Um, and to <laughs> Carl, Smith isn't good enough. We respect your opinion, but you're wrong. Smith is more than good enough. <laughs> right. He is. 
He definitely is. Everyone's Moving right, on. Everyone's However, that's what I say. Everyone's entitled to your opinion. However, sadly, I'm just going to go against what I just said there. Michael Smith loses the semi-final. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Um, what a surprise. Yeah, I, I think... It, I think Michael Van Gerwen beats Michael Smith 6-3 in the semi-final. And Gerwin Price beats Christoph Ratajski 6-4 in the other one. So, again, for me, it is the new El Clasico of darts in the final as MBG takes on Gerwin Price. And on the 3rd of January, 2021, we have a four-time world champion as Michael Van Gerwen beats Gerwin Price 7-5 in a tight one. So, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, five the way. We, 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 we all have a different... Yeah, how oh, many God. TV events have there been this year? How many TV events have there been this year? Uh, I'm trying to think in my head. Uh, World Masters, UK Open, World Match Play, Premier League, Grand Prix, uh, Grand Slam, Euros, players. Nine I've got. Yeah. World Series Finals. And include one. Yeah. How many of them have we been part of online darts for with Phil? About five of them now. And how many times did he back Van Gogh in to win? Five. Five. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold up. I called Price to win one of them and he bombs. Why do you dare say the Premier League just because he didn't qualify? Yeah. <laughs> no. That was your escape. <laughs> no, no. <I'm... laughs> That, 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 that was one of them. I called Price to win it, and I can't think which one it was now. But I actually had Price so to beat Van Gogh in the, in the final. What's that? I think it might. I, I don't think it was the Grand Prix. I think it might have actually been the European Championships, to be fair. Maybe. So, there, there was one. I certainly Maybe. had Price to win. However, well, the big green machine it, is back you know. to form. In the words, you know what's coming. He's back. <laughs> He's back. He's back. He's back. Um, right. No, look, look, in, we, in, we, in the, cha in the chat room, guys. I, I, I genuinely can't wait. Let's go through the chat room as well. Let's see who we think. I'll tell you, Ollie Smith Whitlock final. Can that happen? What? Uh, no, it can't. I think. No, uh, uh, yeah, no, it can. no, it can't. Oh, no, yeah, it can. can. No, it can. Yeah, yeah, it can. can. Whitlock's in the bottom up. Yeah. I couldn't remember where Whitlock was. Yeah. What well, big shout that is, Ollie. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That's yeah. fair. I don't, I don't dislike the game. Final. I don't, I don't no, dislike the game. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Carl's Carl's um, coming and said, uh, you know, about Smith winning lots. Look, look, we all know the record about Michael Smith on TV. We get it, we get it. We honestly do get it, right? But uh, the, he's got too much talent to not win one. It's just, it's, just, it's, it's just, it's going to be a thing. I'm sorry, everybody, but it will be. So, look, I, 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 I think he will win one. I don't know what it's going to be. I honestly believe that had he won the, if he missed though, if he hit those two darts, double sixteen to win the Masters, we could be having a very different conversation about Michael Smith right now. Completely agree. Right. A couple have come up in the comments, so we'll touch on it. Now, the outsiders, gentlemen. Who do we think out of the outside runners is going to have a good run? We're not going to say win it. And in the comments as well, let us know who you think the outsiders who will have a good tournament will be. Um, how many do you want? Just a couple each. Okay. Um, I will. Well, is he, is he an outsider or is he not? I don't know if you class Damon Hetter as an outsider, but he's got half a chance because he's not a seeded player. Yeah, you have to. But he's so. playing some unbelievable could, stuff. Because as well, ranking, he has to go as an outsider. 
okay. So yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll give you that one hundred percent. That I've always I've said who I think is going to make potentially make a quarter final in the sense of either Jeff Smith or King Barry. One of those two will make a quarter final, and I don't know who it's going to be. And I also think Scott White's got half a chance as well. I do. I, I like the way he's playing. I think he'll beat Campbell. See, I, I I'm going. Beat... I'm going the opposite I way. Think, I, I think, think Campbell better. does wait. I think Campbell again, a bit like we disagree with the bottom one. I think the winner of that game could have a good run. Full, full stop. I, I massively I'm impressed. With you. I think I think with Matt Campbell at the World Cup. Yeah, I, the, I think that I think whoever comes through, I think beats Nathan in the form that he's in at the moment. I do think that. I mean, I, I think Nathan's in real danger as well. Um, a couple of people mentioned about um, as well the two women. Of course, we haven't really right. touched on them this year, which is Lisa Ashton. And we'll we'll, we'll, we'll touch on to the women in. A, we'll, we'll do the women's section in a second. Don't worry, it's on my list, guys. It's on my list. Um, of course, I quite again uh, Ryan so Searle so in the chat room, and I agree with that. I like the Searle pick. I think he's mm. he's in a quarter that he could do some damage. I think he's got a chance. I say to could round definitely with the way that it is. I think he's got a chance for fourth round. There's no doubt about that. That there, there are worse seeds to have. Well, to, to be fair, if he gets to the fourth round and plays James Wade, I think he's got a chance there because he scores so heavily compared to Wade. Yeah, but Wade will just take out a one-two-one checkout on the ball, or he'll take out a one-zero-six. And Gob, I'm not being funny, not. but Wade is probably yeah, but Wade is playing Gob. Isn't Wade probably playing the best stuff that certainly scoring wise that you've seen in a while? I think so. Apart from state the bloody obvious, but apart from when he loses, Wade doesn't lose, <laughs> averaging ninety six, ninety seven at the minute, and the percentage on the doubles he loses when he drops down to ninety one, ninety two, where his scoring isn't as efficient, and he, he loses a couple of percentage on his doubles. Um, the one for me, I mean, he's in an absolute stinker part of the draw, but on recent form, he's just not scared of people, and he is. Possibly one of the best double 16 hitters on the planet. Ryan Joyce could do some absolute damage in that part of the draw. If you're them seeds, you've already got it tough enough. You don't want him appearing. What, you mean on Geordie Shaw Wednesday? Yeah. (laughs) Geordie Shaw Wednesday. He starts off for the afternoon, doesn't he? Starts off against Carroll. Geordie Shaw, why I? Don't do that. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Fight a groove. <laughs> Fight a groove. Oh, God. I am showing my age now, aren't uh, I? Yeah, you are. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely showing your age now, my friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> you Definitely. Uh, but who else got? Who else is got. your? Uh, who else is your man? Or woman? I think that's about it. I've already called Claire Macca for a quarter final. Um Yeah. Right. So if you can't only think of so anyone much else. Can get from this draw we'll play him. Right, we obviously it's come up in the chat room. Oh, the Martin top I'm about to say. He's playing on, you can he see man. Can he see man? He gets it, he he, he gets the um, again, the, the, this year we have Lisa Ashton returning to the Palace and for the first time we have Dieter Hedman, the two ladies that will be involved at the Palace this year and they have a tough act to follow from last year. Some you. big... I don't quite know. I, I think my Twitter broke that night. I couldn't log in for some reason. <laughs> I um, bet. I bet. <laughs> To which um, <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very, very good. Um, yeah. But we'll start with Lisa. Adam Hunt. That's a tough first round gig for, for Lisa. Adam found some some decent form towards the back end of the year on the Euro Tour and obviously got through in the slam and and that, what, what, what are we thinking of Lisa's chances heading into that match? Before Adam did his Steve McQueen impression in the Grand Slam, 
I would have given Lisa a better percentage chance than I'm giving her now. I just think in that moment, Hunt showed us something that he's got a bit of bottle about him. So to pull that off, up against it completely, superb. He was a little bit lucky, but he's carried some good pro tour form. He hadn't really delivered much in that tournament until then. And to be honest, he didn't do masses afterwards. Wasn't the most convincing. But that one little performance there makes me think that ultimately he can handle this now. Because rightly or wrongly, there is still a little bit of a stigma around playing against the women in these events. If there wasn't, we wouldn't be making such a big deal out of it as media discussing these two players out right now. Right? It's still a big talking point that there are two ladies playing in the PDC World Championships. And nobody wants to be Ted Evans from last year. Nobody wants to be the next guy that did it. Until it's a regular thing and happens consistently, nobody wants to be the next name on that list. Nobody ever wants to be the next name on that list for the World Championships, but I think this carries that a little bit more. The crowd's back. We don't know how they're going to react and, and take to the lady players to the women's players. Um, if one of the two women are going to come through their game, it's going to be Lisa. She scores very well. She can fly around the board and, and take out the ton plus checkouts without you even realising. She's been around the men's or the PDC tour for long enough now. She's picked up wins on the pro tour. And I just think of the two games that they've drawn, if if one of the two players is going to have a bad night and, and not hit that mid-90s average, it's going to be Adam. So I think Lisa will get chances, but I still think Adam comes through. Man, Dita stole the show, came runners-up on the order of merit from the ladies' series to qualify. Now... Dita's floor game across many years, and she's a great ambassador for the sport, has been sensational. She's won multiple, multiple titles on the floor. However, is her stage game a concern? And I say that going on a lakeside record where she went in favourite or certainly in the top two seeds a lot of the time and never, ever produced that same form that we saw that she's capable of on the floor, on the TV. Is that a concern? And my other concern for her is I don't think, I might be wrong, someone in the chat room knows, but I don't think she's had any competitive match practice since the ladies series. Now, that's a huge concern for me. To be fair, she hasn't had a lot of practice going into the ladies series into the women's series. She played a challenge tour, but that was it. She literally used the challenge tour to get ready for the women's series. <sighs> for me, this isn't about the stage presence. This isn't about how good Dieter Hedman has been for ladies darts over the past 20, 30 years that she's been playing the game, all the titles she's won and all the experience in the world. I just don't think she's got a level of game to beat Andy Bowen. I think Andy Bolton is an incredibly consistent, rugged competitor that won't give up too many lackadaisical chances. He will fight for every dart. He'll put you under pressure in every leg. He will be there or thereabouts. And if you're going to beat him, you have to take it from him. He's he's not going to hand it to you on a plate. And therefore, I think Hedman's going to require a high 90s, maybe even somewhere near the 100 average to really put Andy under pressure. And I'm just not sure she has that level of game, especially over this distance. You agreeing, John? Or are you seeing something different? No, I, I totally agree. Look, Dita for me is, is a legend of the sport. Let's put that there 100%. right now from what she's achieved in, in, in the sport. Is it the, It's not the best draw, I don't think, for her. If you want me to be brutally honest, Andy Bolton's in some really good form. And even if she were to win, I I, I cannot see how she get. No, sorry, excuse me. If you were to win that one, I can see her potentially upsetting Stephen Bunting with the way Bunting's playing. But in order to beat Andy Bolton, she's got to have the game of her life. Because Bolton, if you look at the way Bolton's been playing recently, 
to me, he's especially on the home tour as well. He's played some good stuff. Correct, and like at the players' championships, I thought he looked pretty decent. Same with Lisa as well. Lisa, there's no, there's no doubt that he, she can beat Adam Hunt. She, she's beaten him numerous times on the on the pro tour. But Adam, to me, has looks very, very solid. He's looked in really good shape. He's looked in decent. Um, the, the actions look really good, and his scoring is getting there. It's not, it's not there or thereabouts. It's not. We're not saying he's suggesting he's a power scorer, but I think that he's, he, his scoring is getting up there. Lisa, having the experience of playing on the Pro Tour this year, has definitely got more of a chance. And do I think that she can beat Jamie Hughes? Absolutely. Jamie Hughes has fallen off a cliff. From where he was last year, he's fallen off a cliff. So, I, I, I'm if, if, if they get through the first round, I can see them both upsetting the seed. But the first round tie is arguably harder than the second round tie. That's the God's honest truth. No, completely agree. And the crowd. Let, 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 let's talk about it. It's been talked about in the chat room and we said we're going to bring it I up. Am we will have so excited one... for this, Phil Bars. I'm going on Saturday we have... to the Saturday. I cannot wait. 1,000 fans right, per Jeff. session at the Palace. Um, look, this is, this is a good thing. Yes, it's only 1,000, but we saw over the weekend how those fans in football stadiums made such a difference just to have proper cheering, proper passionate people in there. And I think it's going to have the same impact on the darts, especially for players like Gerwin Price, like Nathan Aspinall, that this is what they thrive on. This is what they buzz off of. And yes, we all know there's, like we said, there's a lot of rules and regs, but it's just going to be damn good to have fans back in the arena. I can't wait. I'm buzzing. I, I, I've got tickets for the Saturday, the 19th of December. I'm really excited, uh, as you may have just been able to tell. Uh, and, okay, here's a question, though, because obviously on the regs at the moment, the PDC website has said that Christmas jumpers like barsie has got on are allowed. Do we think that they'll allow this? Because this is what I'm thinking at this moment in time. Like, I've got the suit on, and, and like, un underneath as well, everybody. Please I've also tell got me you've got trousers, trousers on. on here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've got the trousers on as well. So I don't know whether they'd allow this. I think they would. It's not. It's not offensive. It's not fancy dress. It's offensive to my eyes. I think it's borderline. I think it's borderline. Look, I'd get away with that. I think I'd get away with that. Answers in the comments, by the way. I think it's about as close as Oscar Pistorius's defence. Oh. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, oh. Well, that was that. That's changed. That's changed the tune. I didn't think we were that <laughs> out, Phil. He's <laughs> after the watershed. We're fine. That's what I mean. It's after, it's after the watershed. We're fine. Or I could have said the the, the jury that OJ Simpson bribed back in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Come on, Philip. Learn the lingo. <laughs> so, Mr. Definitely. Simpson, we found we we, we found the murder weapon in the boot of your car, covered in blood with your fingerprints on it. How do you plead? Not really. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Before we get into it, I have massive legal trouble. Nothing to see here. Uh, look, here's a question: Do we Back generally up, believe? Please. You're about to say, Crit Crit Cryptonite has come out. She said, "If they let Chris Mason in with his shirts, I think you'll get in their their problem." Chris's shirts are amazing, <laughs> very quickly, but I think I think I'll get away with this. I might send a photo to Matt. I might send a photo to Matt Porter on Twitter and see what he thinks. Uh, Matt, you thinking you're important enough for him to respond? Well, shame. Who was asked the question? Oh, uh, brilliant. But right, guys, we're gonna throw we're yes. gonna round up Well, we're yes, gonna on, round up the man. worlds in a minute. So get your get your questions in the chat room ready. It's free for all time. It's ask what you want, darts related. We do it every time. And thank you, Nicholas, as well for my yeah. I stepped in for three games on the home tour today at very short notice um for, for Webby. So thank you very much, buddy. No, Mind your own business. 
We take we take we take the Mick out of Barzi on the home tour, but he does do a very good job. And we're not just saying this to make sure that we stay with him for the World Championships. He does do a very good job. We can't we can't deny that. It's just what we do, isn't it? So right, we're going to throw it open to you guys now. It's that time. We've waffled about the world. Who we think is going to win? Oh, by the way, back anyone else that we said will win. So all of us, we've all got the comments open. So we'll we'll go through it. If you find any questions, boys, pick them out because the chat room has been electric tonight. So there's going to be a few of them. It really has. Oh. Well, well, FDI's obviously come out with mad time now. Obviously, Saturday night, a new dawn for amateur darts. <laughs> as Barzi completely goes down, as Barzi tries to uh, leave us already. <laughs> what? 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 Hi! What, 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 he wants to say something. He wants to say something. Uh, look, look, I'm not going to let everyone know that yes I know everything that's going on Saturday but my lips are sealed I literally cannot say anything because I will get shot however do not miss it that is all I'm saying it is an absolute new dawn for amateur darts it's completely different from what we know it's, it will take the sport in a completely different place but it's going to be amazing that's all I'm saying there's been plenty of teasers out there, but it is just brilliant. Just oh. brilliant. What oh, about the Barney? Go away. Sid Big Venture! Yay! We love it. We love it. We love it. Oh, um, come on. Go on, tell us right. about your favourite Dutchman. Virgil van Dijk. My <laughs> <head>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very good. Very good. Right. So, um, right. Well, 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 go on, go on. Go on, go on, go go on, go on Jaffe, you found a question. Out of no, go on. No, uh, we'll go on here. If, uh, from Kryptonite, who, uh, Kryptonite A1, he says, do you think seriously it's time to get Michael Smith's psychological help? I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. He always falls short after promising too much and always goes to pieces. It's gone on way too long. This is an interesting one because, like, look, Glenn Durrant has always mentioned about the fact how psychological, like, psychology's helped him and sports psychologists has helped him. So, I, look, I, we obviously don't know. We obviously don't know what Michael Smith's thinking. We obviously don't know what it is, whether it's that pressure, that desire that he, he wants so much to win games. I am... I'm of the of the opinion that if he goes to another final and loses it, then potentially it might be time to get sports psycho a sports psychologist in. But he's won he's just won his first two titles in two years. He's back in the winner's circle. And I think that's a sort of freedom that I think he wants. So look, he's got to defend the match play final next year. Obviously, big uh, big uh, chunk of his ranking. And that's the reason and obviously he's got to defend the world championship final this year for two hundred thousand pounds of his ranking. I don't think Michael Smith ever practices Kieran. I just think that he's that desire that that desire to win that mage tournament. It's also, I think as well, it's it's more as well for his family, isn't it, Phil? You, you'd say as well because he's desperate yeah, no, to he's, win he's, it he's, for his family more than anything else. The, the, his kids live and breathe the journey with him. You, you see the pictures that Dags post on social media, which are great, by the way. I, I absolutely well. love it, but. Yeah, they, they just, as a fan, they just live and, and, and breathe it. But look, he's too good. I, I, and I will say this, right, even in 20 years' time, we might still be saying it, but to the day he packs it up, I will say it, he will win big, big tournaments. Great. I think, I think you're right there. I think you're absolutely spot on. I think he will. Um, here we are, Aaron, CPFC. Thoughts on the atmosphere and how the walk-ons will work? Um, look, obviously, you can't, People won't be able to go up to the barrier for the walk-ons for obvious reasons because all the players have still got to go through COVID testing and, and everything like that. So, look, there obviously will still be a walk-on of, of some sort and it will just be good that, the, that there's an atmosphere so people can get involved in it. I suppose until the opening night, we don't really know, guys. Definitely I, I just not. want to see uh, what comes back. 
I, look, I got fed up. Of I don't think there's going to be a walk on not people's songs. We've missed some absolute belters. I can't believe they did dual walk on some absolute season. shockers. Well, gutted. Mm, yeah, to an extent. Yeah. Um, also, one from <laughs> Pim saying. Uh, what for Pim saying? Do you think uh, Al- Amit Gisawala will come any closer in eighty average on the opening night? Pim, I will be brutally honest with you. I don't know much about him. No idea. So I've got no idea whether he's going to be good. I don't know whether he's going to be bad. I've got absolutely no idea. What a way, by the way, uh, to, uh, to to get yourself into a game uh, to get yourself into a tournament. Play in the opening match against Steve West. You beat them. Come back and play the world champion opening night next and <laughs> later on in the night. Yeah, um, Luke. But this is a good one. Best player to miss out on the world. Good question. That is a very good question. Best player. Mm. Best player to miss out on the world. I'm going to go to dartsrankings.com because obviously they've got the list there, haven't they? The Pro Tour qualifiers that have missed out on the World Championships. So I'm going to go to that and going to go and look through it. Um, do you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say with the way that he's been playing this year, I'm going to say Willie Borland. I think Willie Borland's played really, really well. And I, he deserves oh, a place at the Worlds this year for the way that he's been playing. Yeah, I like him. I've got, I've got a lot of time for Big Borland. I think he's played well. Gob, for you? Phil Taylor, great comment. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Justin Pike, he's, he's been he's picked up a form speaking over the line. Uh, Kai Fan Lung's another that's really impressed me. Um, but there's two that really stick out in mind. One's Yella Klassen. Uh, I still think he's an unbelievable dart player on his day. Watching him in, in full flow is is brilliant. He just needs to find that range again. He's, he's tinkering with his setup a lot of the minute if you watch his last few. Um, streamed matches. He seems to have a different barrel in his hand every single time. And the other one, um, Carl, Carl Anderson. He's still a fantastic dart player when he is about on tour. He hasn't been able to travel back over to the UK for half the year. Um, uh, he's just quality when he wants to be. And obviously for reasons beyond his control, largely, he's, he's not been around for a lot this year in the World Champions. Yeah, um, for me, I think Scott Mitchell. I think considering he hasn't got a tour card, I think he had an absolute fabulous time on the the pro tour and was really unlucky to miss out. So for me, I for me, I think Scott Mitchell. And I'd, I'd like to have seen Scotty Dog at the Worlds as well because I think he offers something just just different. So that would be that would be mine. Um, Jason, where is it? Asking, do Cantela and Shinna wear headsets during the home tour? I'll say they should do, but I can't confirm or deny if they do or not. But they should. Um, so one, uh, I saw as, yeah, one as well. I saw uh, was what are you? What's your opinion on cancelling the tie break? Uh, that's a good question. We actually talked about Ooh, it tonight. Uh, yeah, uh, to be fair, I've got it on my list here and I've overlooked it. Um, I think we're all going to be in agreement. It, it had this. to happen. It had to happen. I don't um, like it. Just for this year, it had to happen. I don't care if it had to happen. The, the games are too big to be won on the throwing of a bullseye backstage. I'm sorry. I, there's a plenty of events throughout the year already so far where I think there should be tiebreakers and race maybe not race to sixes, they're a little bit more cutthroat. When you get to the tens, I think they should be two clear legs if you've slogged it out for that much. Games of significant importance and, and large ranking amounts should not be won off the throwing of the bullseye backstage. No, I'm but not a fan of it. I agree with you. But I but understand I, why I, they've had to do I, it. 100%. Yeah. Well, the way the regs are, it's a case of they cannot have people in the venue until one o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been allowed fans in. So, although I agree, I don't like it. It's a small no. sacrifice to make for a year to get people back in watching darts. Look, if next year, if we're back to normal, as we should be, and they don't bring it back, then it's a completely different argument. But for one year, 
and what it means, I can personally live with it and understand why. Look, you, you talk about it there. Reese Taylor lot mentions it obviously about what well, you talked about that tense uh, that matches he's come for it for the history of the world. Absolutely, Luke You think of Barney Taylor, you think of Cross MBGs. He's talked about absolutely the greatest game that the Alexander Palace has ever seen. Jamie Drummond says, canceling the tiebreakers, I can stand for the first and the second round matches, but thereafter it doesn't make sense. I agree with you, but it also does because whilst there's only three matches that you're playing per day maximum after that in the third round and the fourth round, potentially because you're going to that extended format, they've got to win four sets, you're going to hit, reach the same problem. Same with the quarters, same with the semis. Even if you're playing two matches, you've got five sets potentially, it could be a ten, it could be a nine set match, both of them, and you're going to be in the same situation. Look, how about you throw for the ball at 2 2, Reese Taylor Lock says? I'm not, I don't disagree right. with that, potentially. I don't disagree with I that. I never like that. No, I, I think no. whilst I, think I don't stage, agree, I think you're all right. It, it should, whilst I don't agree that it should be one off, this event should be one off a bullseye. I think in pro tours and things like that, and I've, I've seen it in local leagues all over. I, I don't agree that the world championship should be decided on somebody winning the ball off and in, in effectively giving them the, the darts in that final set. But it is a skill. And I, I don't see why, if they determine that that's a deciding factor before the match, you should have to redo it. I, I yeah, know that's no, a, no. a conflict of my previous opinion, but once you've won one, that should be it for me. And if you're going to use it as a deciding factor, okay. I don't necessarily agree with that in this format. But I definitely don't agree with it happening again. I'll throw one back to the people in the chat room. Gets to five, but they get the sorry. But what happens if it gets to five all then in a, in a deciding set? Do we just carry on playing for two legs? Normally, I'd love to. I would. Look, I'm, I'm going to throw this one back to the chat room. The people asking about the tiebreaker. Yeah, come on, come on, Flip the coin. Would you rather have the tiebreaker and no fans or fans and no tiebreaker? It's a good point. Because basically that's what it comes to. I'm not, sure that... actually... I'm not sure it's actually need to be asking that. Well, well obviously <laughs> I've got you because people, are, people aren't happy with it not I, being I, it. I but for that, one but... year... Reese Me, Taylor Lott mentions about the about, question, about I'm, the MBG... I'm, I'm, about... I'm, I'm, paper. Gob's gone, is he? Oh, no, he's back. Is he back? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. You, you, you dropped out then for a second. Uh, what I was going to say was, is that, yeah, fans and no tiebreakers coming up okay. a couple of times. Just a quick one. Um, uh, as well, uh, MVG uh, cross came down to the ball. Uh, it sort of didn't. MVG missed two match starts, or th was it three match starts in the final leg, and he lost the ball. So... I I don't understand that. Uh, I, I I look. I think his deal. Um, as well, Jamie says, why didn't they have left matches per night to stop overrunning by adding in an extra few days? Simple fact is they couldn't because they couldn't get fans back in quick enough. I don't think personally. Plus, as well, we already have eighteen days of the World Championships. We don't need another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you start no, cutting into key school preparation and other events. They're at Ali Pali in the new year. The Master Snookers there, they've got to turn the rig around for that. Um, that that's the issue, is the fact they've got to turn it around for other events that are booked. So you, you can't... Speaking of, you must have been reading the comments, Gob. Takes us another one. Do you think Q School 2021 will be the same structure, um, possible extra challenge to cards? No, I think, obviously, Barry's already said we'll have an announcement on Q School this week. Um, Just my gut, I don't think... It will be in Wigan this year because Wigan is in tier three at the moment. Yeah. Am I right? It is. So I, right? I, yes. I think it will be moved somewhere in tier two for obvious reasons. Will they have to limit numbers? Possibly. I don't, I don't know, but you, you might think so. They might have to say, look, there's X amount of spaces. It is first come, first served. Get your names in the hat for a year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I, I, we we, we don't know this. We're, we're just, we're just talking. We're just... 
Go on, go. I'm pretty sure there's, there's there's a fair few cards on offer this year, and you just want to see them filled with the best players possible. And I worry that that's not going to happen this year. I know sometimes it's a bit of a lottery and, and some quality players miss out. And sometimes you look at players that are playing on the challenge tour, ability-wise, are they better than, than some tour card holders? Yes, okay, that's sport. But there's only really four or five at any one point. You could look at going, all right, that's where it hasn't happened. And uh, you take that as percentage-wise. But I can see that at least doubling, if not more, this year. This is elite sport, and I want elite participants. I don't want people that turned up to Q school that went along for the ride, snuck it through a day, and then spend two years struggling to make a go of it when there are better dark players sat on the challenge tour not competing. As, as a fact, I want to be year, entertained, mate. and that means I want to see the best dark players over and over. And, 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 and until they change the structure, that can always happen, as, we, as it showed. This year, right now, are like you say, are the best one two eight players on the on the pro tour the best one two eight in my opinion? No, they're not. So until you change the format, which allows that luck to happen, it's always going to happen. But that's a complete structural change of cues. But I just worry that numbers going to inflate too much next year. That. We've spoken about the standard and quality of darts, but that could really dilute the professional top end players next year. You're, you're just worried about a certain Dutchman getting a card, aren't you? Because he's he's not getting a card. No. Let, 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 let's let's um, let's stop this. Let's stop this sh- uh, shite <laughs> now. Actually, before we go, quick 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 one from Luke, where I he think... says, "Surely they have to stay oh, in the same Luke, hotel." Yeah. There, there was seven hundred plus last year. I don't think so, mate, because when you go back to the challenge tour that happened this year, they all stayed in various places around Barnsley. So I'm pretty sure there must be a loophole somewhere to say they don't have to stay in the same hotel like on the challenge and dev tour, for for instance. Right, can you see any more questions before we wrap today's World Championship special up? I think so. I don't think so. I think we've we've covered a lot there. I'll, I'll be honest with you right now. Yeah, hundred percent. It's been an absolute amazing show as always, guys. The chat room has been electric. You guys have been sensational. Thank you, guys. In the chat room, can't thank you enough. Obviously, online darts. We will have every aspect of the world championship covered, and just because we are the channel that keeps on giving, there will be a live lounge on the World Championship Eve. We all got excited on Christmas Eve with the kid. However, this time it's all about the night before the Worlds and we will be live 8pm next Monday for the live round. Like I say, we will be handing the reins over to you guys to let us take the show yeah. in whatever fashion form it goes on. Where the, so, where the show goes, nobody knows. Just a quick, just a quick reminder for everybody before we go that, uh, that just a quick reminder that of course we'll have a podcast out as always, and we will be doing podcasts throughout the World Championships all the way through every day. The only place that you'll be able to get reaction analysis daily from us three, and also a wide range of our online darts writers that have just joined us. By the way, I know a load of them are watching, so thank you as always, everybody. Um, but they will be joining us throughout the tournament because, uh, let's be honest about it, after 18 days of myself, Gob and Phil, you'll probably want to uh, hear some different voices. So we'll be doing uh, bits and pieces throughout, but our, obviously our online darts writers will also be joining us as well. And we cannot wait to see you back here for literally whatever the hell you want to talk about darts-wise. 100%. And of course, make sure you head over to online darts social media platforms. We had an amazing competition running at the moment which will end in the next few days we have two prototype sets of windmill michael van gow in darts that were thrown by the green machine sent back tinkered with for the new range it is literally money cannot buy and to give you all a little teaser once that's one's done on the 16th of 16th 15th whatever day it is 15th. sorry 15th we have yeah. a be- very special competition 
to kick off the world involving a flying Scotsman. That's the only teaser I'm going to give you, so stay tuned. If you haven't yet, make sure you go over to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. What's that, Gob? You've broken up there. Bad signal, mate. Can't hear you. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel you and, of course, follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have everything covered for you at live uh, online. Dark, sorry. Um, of course, thank you very much for joining us. As always, I've been Phil Bars, joined by Jack Gobby-Garwood and Jala Thee. And gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. It's been emotional. We'll be back next week. <laughs>